In this video, I'm going to discuss a spreadsheet simulation of a reaction of this type, A2 becoming 2A. It's, you could consider it a dissociation, or an example of such a reaction would be the dissociation of dinitrogen tetraoxide, N2O4, to form 2NO2. The rate constant for the four reaction we'll call KF, that for the reverse, KR. The rate equations, um, we'll assume this is the mechanism as well as the uh, reaction. The change in the concentration of A2 divided by the change in the time, the rate of change of A2 with time, is equal to minus Kf A2, that's the forward reaction, and it's depleting A2, so it's negative, plus Kr times A concentration squared. And the square is because of the two there. And the rate of change of A with time is equal to 2 times Kf A2, because when Kf uh, A2 dissociates, it forms 2A, so we have the 2 in there, minus 2 Kr A squared, and the 2 is there as well. At equilibrium, both of these would be 0 and at equilibrium, the concentration of A squared divided by A, 2, would equal Kf over Kr. You can verify that for yourselves. I'm going to bring the delta T to the other side, and delta T is going to be one second. We're going to use one second intervals as we did in previous videos. The change in the concentration of A2 in that one second interval, it will equal minus Kf A2 plus Kr A squared concentration and likewise for A the change in the concentration in each second would be 2 Kf times A con A2 concentration minus 2 Kr A concentration squared times the one second interval. So I've already programmed it. Uh, I'm not going to go through how I program it. It's very straightforward. Uh, you can look at the other videos to see how I did that. Um, so now let's uh, take a look at, at how this behaves. Um, I'm using rate constants of Kf of 0.02. It means 2% of the Kf of the A2 molecules dissociate in each second, and 0.01, and that means 1% of the A molecules recombine. So let's bring in the graph. I've already programmed the graph. And <clears throat> we're starting with 2 moles per liter of A2 and no A. And the concentration of A2 decreases, and that increases with time. And you, you, you certainly at equilibrium after 200 seconds. And uh, down here, I have the equilibrium concentration. And I verify that the, uh, the law of mass action holds. The, the concentration of A squared divided by the concentration of A2 is equal to 2, uh, which is the ratio of the rate constants, Kf over Kr. So uh, if we start this reaction, instead of at 2 moles per liter of A, let's say 1.5 of, of A and 0.5, I'm going to keep the total concentration. Well, actually, it's not uh, OK. Uh, we see, again, it reaches equilibrium. It's a different set of equilibrium conditions, but the ratio of A concentration squared divided by the concentration of A2 is still 2. Um, I can start from the other extreme. I mean, if I had 2, I'd really have 4 of A if I went in the complete opposite direction. It goes off scale, but now you see actually the same equilibrium conditions that you had if you started with 2 moles per liter of this and 0 of that. And again, it, it, it keeps that ratio at 2. Now, if I change the rate constants, let me change it Kf to 0.01 so that the rate constants are equal. Okay, and let me go back to 2 molar A and 0 molar B, A, A2. Um, 2 molar A2 and 0 molar. Okay, and I have the same set of conditions. Uh, you could play, uh, well, if I make 
keep the ratio the same, but I, I make it a, a, a larger rate constant. So it's one to one ratio on the rate constants, but I'm going to make it 0.08 and 0.08 it comes to equilibrium much quicker, as you imagine. And of course, if I make it 0.001 and 0.001, it doesn't even get to equilibrium. And, and the, the ratio of the uh, concentration of A squared to the concentration of A2 is no longer 1, because we haven't gotten to equilibrium. So let's go back to where we were. And uh, let's look at what effect um, changing the concentration of A2 in the middle of this reaction. Let's suppose we inject it uh, one mole per liter of A into the reaction mixture at 100 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to add one. And <laughs> you can see suddenly the system is coming to equilibrium. It's, all, it's pretty much at equilibrium. And suddenly we jack up the concentration of A by one mole per liter, and now we have too much A and not enough A2, and the concentration of A decreases and the concentration of A2 increases. This is an example of Le Chatelier's principle. We're putting a stress on the system, and uh, we're increasing the concentration of A, and the system reacts by decreasing the concentration of A, as you can see here, and increasing the concentration of A2. Uh, we could play a kind of a, a, a reverse game. Instead of adding one, we could put minus one mole per liter of A in. And now, um, instead of the A decreasing, it increases, and the a2 decreases and they come to equilibrium. They're not quite at equilibrium yet. It, this should be 1 because there's a 1 to 1 ratio of the k's. Okay. Uh, if I make the k's a little bigger, 0.02 and 0.02, it, it certainly reaches equilibrium. Okay. Uh, so uh, using Excel, I think you can see that you can uh, get a lot of insight into chemical equilibrium, understand the law of mass action, um, vary things and see what happens and try and understand why they happen. It's a very useful device um, and uh, simulations are, are important in, uh, in science and uh, they help us understand things in the classroom. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, I'll see you next time.